Hi everybody, my name is George Evenson and we're going to have a, a day today when we're going to go back and uh, review some of the experiences that we've had. All three of us are, were born and raised in Sevastopol. We've known each other since, uh, since the beginning. And between the three of us we've got something like 275 years or 65 years experience around here when you combine it. And so I think it's unusual to get the people that have been around uh, this township this long. That's nearly half of the life of the township that, uh, that we've been here. And we've seen so many changes in the past uh, years of our life. And, it's, uh, and we, want to, we want to talk about some of the good old times and the bad old times. And today we're at Don Peter Silke's house. Uh, and... Uh, uh, with us today is, and oh, today is the uh, 4th of April in uh, 2009. And we've got with me here today is Don Peters Hilke and Charlie German. So, Don, you got something to say to introduce yourself? How do you do? I'm Don Peters Hilke. I lived here for, well, pretty long time, I guess. <laughs> I'll be 80 in the spring, another <coughs> month, in fact, spring is here. But uh, I lived in this area quite a while, yeah. about as long as George. Yeah. We farmed right in back here, and we farmed and back in the years. We had far, all farmed here, the three of us. Yeah. We all went through that, and our folks were farmers, and we still remember all the good old days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Charlie, I, Charlie I'm Charlie Jarman. I'm Charlie Jarman. I've been here all my life, of course, and I... Like I always tell people, I never went any place. I just stayed here in Sebastopol <laughs> and made a living here. Uh, my my grandfather originally came here from uh, Gibraltar Township in the Greenwood area. He moved down here because he felt there was less stones down here and there was better land for farming. They bought the place at where where we're on now because it, there was some good uh, hardwood timber on that and, and they felt they could make some money by hauling the uh, logs or, or the firewood to town. And they did for quite a while to, to, to supplement their income and to pay, to pay the mortgage. Yeah. So why don't, we, uh, why don't we begin with some of your earliest memories of, uh, of, the, of our farm life and then we can go on into uh, some of our school years. So, Charlie, why don't you start some of your, your early memories of farm life and uh, your starting into school? Well, from what I remember, every place had some cows. Every, there was a farm on every corner practically, and in any place there was a house, there was also cows. Sometimes a cherry orchard and stuff like that, and that, that shaped, shaped my life quite a bit, the early cherry orchard years in that we would go up in, uh, to Wabino and, and uh, get some uh, Native American people to come in and pick cherries for us. So we, we, uh, I got exposed at early times to, to Native American people and, and their customs and the way they, they worked. Uh, yeah, you got anything to say about that, bud? Well, we had cherries. Yeah, we had cherries. And uh, we worked cherries and worked cherries, and, and uh, I guess my grandpa owned the cherry orchard at that time, and that's when the war started, the war years, and it brought the big price up on cherries at the 10 cents a pound. And boy, we sounded like everybody was, all them cherry growers were getting rich. Man, they were calling in the dough. And yeah. you didn't need much of an orchard either, and boy, there was some pretty good checks coming, but then we hit the bad years. The checks didn't come either, and finally most of the orchards went down. Yeah. But now I see that there's an awful, awful lot of cherries coming back, especially up in uh, the northern part, Sister Bay and Ephraim through that area. And there's an awful, awful lot of uh, 
Sure, and I believe someday that they'll make a comeback, which for a while there, there was nothing no more as far as cherry. Everybody was pulling them out. Yeah. The 20 acres I live on here, I bulldozed all out. Yeah. Planted pine trees now are in it, and we gave up on the cherries because they were just nothing. You lost money. If you had an orchard, you lost money. Yeah. And I'm sure you'll yeah. remember yeah. that, George. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had, we had about 20 acres of cherries, and... Uh, we had, a, we had a picker's camp, and uh, well, at, at first we didn't because the trees were small. So we get all the neighbor kids to come over and pick cherries. You yeah. know? Jeez, 11 cents a pail they were getting, you know, for picking. And that bushelled up after. <laughs> George, you made more money. I was getting, I remember four cents a pail. Four cents a pail. Four <laughs> cents a pail, you guys, as I remember. You guys, that, that, was, that was too cheap. You, you overpaid. Have You'd have made more money. If you... <laughs> <laughs> but, but we had... Uh, yeah, we, we had uh, the neighbor kids would come over and pick, and, and finally, though, it got to the point where, you know, you, the, the, there weren't so many neighbor kids anymore, so then we would get, um, well, we'd get people, we'd get the Mexican families, and we didn't have any Native Americans, but we had uh, Mexican families, and we had uh, 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 families from down south, and one of the, one of the kids that, uh, I remember particularly, we had a camp there, and these little kids would come out of, well, they were kind of, we call them hillbillies, but uh, the two little kids were sitting outside the Pickers camp door having a tobacco spitting contest. <laughs> so they were, they were a little different, you know. <clears throat> but um, they were good workers, but then uh, we always had the fun of going up to the cherry factory, you know, and lining up with the truck and yeah. talking to the, all the neighbors about what's going on and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, that, that, there was a, right after the war, and it was kind of an interesting story about that because uh, I remember it was 1946 and 1947, and in a little bit into 1948, the cherries were <clears throat> all the way up to something like 16 cents a pound. Yeah, they were. And we had the biggest crop in history. Yeah. Something yeah. like dark honey, I think, 40 million pounds of cherries. And <clears throat> so we, um, uh, that year, there was such good money in it that a lot of farm mortgages got paid off that had been in, yep. in a mortgage yep. for the whole depression. Yep, I remember that. And uh, <clears throat> then after that, after the mortgages paid off, a lot of people would buy trucks, new trucks. They'd buy 46 and 47 trucks. And I noticed there were some of them 46 and 47 trucks were still around in the 1960s because <laughs> they never had any good, good sure years after them. that. Tell and you there why. might still be a couple of them around. <laughs> yeah. I'll but, tell uh, you why, George, it, the, because that 16 cents that you mentioned and the 10 cents that Donnie mentioned, I bought a, um, an, an orchard and some land from, from his uh, grandfather, and uh, they were quoting us a price of, I think, was 14 cents a pound, something like that. Yeah. Well, when the harvest come, it got down to nine and a half cents a pound. And um, some of that we didn't even get paid for because <laughs> nope. the, the, uh, the, the, the packers just defaulted on, on, yeah. on, their, on what we were owed. And so it made it kind of tough going sledding there for a yeah, few years. Did. Did. <laughs> but I still may be older than you guys. I remember back when at the cherry orchard in the morning, Hear a truck come from Reynolds Brothers, the packing place, with all German prisoners on it. Oh, my. Right? Yeah. And we had uh, German prisoners, oh, yeah. war prisoners, yeah. pick, help pick our cherries. Oh, I think there yeah. was, I don't know if there was 30 or 50, I don't remember, that used to come. You could contract them from the, like the, the fruit, from yeah. Reynolds Brothers. Oh, sure. uh, yeah. And I, we talked to them guys a lot. They come and uh, they had a guard with them. The guy carried a gun, oh, yeah. a rifle with him, and yeah. he was the guard. He wouldn't do nothing. He'd just sit there. Well, they weren't going to run away. They were the best cherry pickers you could find. Yeah. And they were all people. You'd talk to them. They'd show you pictures of their uh, families, their yeah. wife and the kids, yeah. and they couldn't wait to get back home. Yeah. And they were really treated good. Yeah. yeah I'll tell you that. They, they all stayed together up by Reynolds, yeah. and they had a big snow fence around and they all lived in that camp. Yeah. There were some over at the fairgrounds too. Yeah, they <laughs> the sure had them. But yeah. I remember one time we had, we had uh, a crew of them out in the orchard and my mother was out there taking in the pails, you know, and the guard would always stand around the, 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 the check-in site. Yeah. So 
<clears throat> one day this guard and this German guy were talking together and it, it amounted to the conversation, well, uh, let me see your gun, the guard, the, the prisoner said, the Ten guard. Ten. So my mother was saying that <laughs> this, this guard handed this, yeah, right. the, 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 a, 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 looked like a Thompson submachine gun. Yeah. Well, my mother was just terrified. She never got over that till her dying day. But, there probably <laughs> was no bullets in it. <laughs> probably not. Oh, they, probably they, was. That that was really something. And but they were all nice fellows. And some of them actually came back to North County. Yeah, they came back after the war. After the war, made and their I own remember back. Margaret's grandpa. He was a German, second generation German, and he'd get them. Uh, he could talk to them, and he'd buy tobacco. They liked to get this yeah. um, chewing tobacco yeah. and cigarettes and that kind of stuff. And yeah, that was kind of interesting. That cherry industry, though, that was, uh, I mean, that was all you talked about in all the spring. People in January were out cutting buds, February cutting buds to see if, if, uh, if. Uh, so you're going to have if, a crop uh, or not. Huh? <laughs> I remember there was a guy, who, he was such a pessimist. And my dad's name was Louis, and this guy's name was uh, Henry. Well, anyway, Henry and Louis were visiting, and so. Uh, Henry would come out in the in the winter time and visit, and he said, "Well, it looks like the cherries are all shot. are all shot. They're all there's no cherries this year. Well, it got to be spring, and the cherries would open up a little bit. Then he said, "Well, I don't think they're going to pollinate this year. We've had too much bad weather." <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, you know, it got closer to picking time. We're not going to get any pickers this year. Well, we got them picked. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get paid. <laughs> and by the time, by the time the 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 season we finally got paid and everything, it was January and then start over again. Start over. But it was always so downbeat. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, uh, what about going to school? You have anything remember about the school year? Oh, gee. Yeah, it was a good school. We couldn't wait until we get out of it that we could get over to Sevastopol, the school, the the big school. We could get away from the nuns, because. Uh, <laughs> They were pretty tough to work for, <laughs> but yeah. uh, then we went to the high school and well, then we met more. There was a chance to meet more kids and get in a bigger school and get into sports, which was pretty nice. But we had a lot of times. I was telling George before that uh, I remember one year I rode on the sleigh bus, and I imagine there's a lot of people that don't remember the sleigh bus <laughs> in Sebastopol <laughs> no more. It had a little wood stove in the middle of the bus and they pulled it with horses and go right across the field because the roads were too full of snow. So that's how we got to school for a couple of years. Yeah. And I remember that and the kids sure had a heck of a good time. And then we went to the old school bus with the wheels on. Well then we'd get stuck in the mud all the time. And we always had a laugh, the bus driver, which was Fuzzy Hain, he'd say, get out, kids, and push. And when we all got out, we'd hold back the bus instead of pushing <laughs> it, because we know we were going to go to school early. <laughs> so we had a lot of good times. And yeah, yeah. From kids there haven't on, changed much, have they? <laughs> no. And from there on, we all thought that they were crazy when they talked about blacktopping the townships and getting blacktop. We couldn't believe it. But old Frank Forrest, I guess he was the main guy. He was the guy. We'd yeah, be still was. driving the gravel roads if it wasn't for old Frank. He was town chairman, wasn't he, George? Yeah, he was town yeah, chairman. Charlie, he was town chairman. Yeah. And a good one, too. Yeah. You know, I was, good of I was at the town meeting when when they passed this idea of, of mm -hmm. blacktopping all the roads in Sebastopol. They were going to do all the roads. It, it's only a couple of short pieces we're going to do. And it was $150,000. They blacktopped all the roads in Sebastopol. Oh. I kid you not. And people were thinking, my God, how can we afford $150,000? Yep. We'll never afford that. But they said, well, the reason you're doing that is because you're going to save it on the school buses because the roads were like washboards. Those old gravel roads, they yep. wouldn't get, uh, they wouldn't get uh, uh, graded often. And, and they were like washboards. The buses, they got shook apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't black top a mile for that. No, <laughs> for that no, price. they wouldn't get anything out of the garage. What but yeah, difference? that was a big thing. And and the Bank of Sturgeon Bay at that time, Cliff Herlich was involved, and he, they they borrowed the money to the town at four percent, and that that was a pretty good deal at that time. Yeah. But we got all the roads blacktop, and I think we we're the first township in the county to have 
all the roads black. Yeah, we I were way that. ahead of them. Yeah, of course, the best was always been way ahead of everybody anyway. Yes, <laughs> God, yes, I'm sure of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Do> <laughs> Is that why our taxes were so high? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Those were those were little different days. Uh, you got anything you remember about school, Charles? Oh, I remember the the teachers and that that we had some I liked, some I didn't like, and and things like that. And uh, I I never minded going to school because I didn't have too much of a hard time with with school. And mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I I remember that boy that building could get cold on a cold day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is a great school. Yeah. yeah, the wind yeah. would blow right through those windows the way it seemed, and it, and it just it it would freeze you to no end. In fact, there was a few days where we didn't have school because it was they it was couldn't keep the school yeah. Yeah. school warm. Yeah, yeah. One well, night they had a snowstorm. They they had a snowstorm, and it was so bad the kids had to stay over in school. Yeah. That was a, that was a, it must have been an exciting night. Yeah, that wasn't too uncommon. I mean, to oh. stay overnight once in a while in school yeah. or to get home way or late, you know, late, or yeah. the school bus was always late, snowstorm or something, yeah. always made, and we'd have our snow days. Yeah. And I remember in the old Catholic school yet where I went to, we still had the old outhouses yet, I remember them in the Catholic yeah. school, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Of course, we all had them at home anyway, so we knew what they yeah, were. We <laughs> Nobody, nobody knew what an indoor, indoor toilet, toilet was. I was mean, no. It took us a week to learn how to run that little handle on the side. That's right. <laughs> that <was for> but uh, yeah, that was something. Uh, you know, people don't realize that, but the, when electricity came up and down these roads, you know, that was that was a, really a big thing. It, it went past it went past County Trunk P pretty early because. They had to get power to Sevastopol School. Those oh, yeah. was like in 1926, something like that. So those, those, and and then those, they get a bad storm, and then those uh, wires would break. Yeah. And I remember one time in the winter, one of those high falls wires broke, and we had electric fence going around this pasture. Mm. And every time that wire would swing, it would hit those electric. <laughs> All the fence posts were burning, all around, and the, we had the electric the transformer in the house. You know the thing that makes it click, and sure enough, there was fire there flying out. Of it. My dad grabbed that and tore that off the wall. But yeah, then then they'd come out and they'd fix the wires, and and uh, and and and, and it, uh, we, in a day or so we'd have electricity again. But when that came, when electricity came, you know, then then the power came, and it wasn't long. You you had pressure water, mm -hmm. and you couldn't have a toilet in the house unless you had pressure water. Mm -hmm. oh. You couldn't have that unless you had electricity. My God, no, George, I remember on the old farm over here, where I was farm, when we moved there, they did not, they, we had a toilet, but, and uh, the faucets and everything in the toilet, and the toilet worked, but they had a big water tank up in, up, upstairs. upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. And they'd, we'd pump that full, yeah. and then, then she'd they flush the pressure. toilet from yeah. there. That would give you your pressure. <laughs> yeah. So that, that was back a few years yeah, too. Yeah, that was back a few years. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people innovated and came up with ideas on how to, how to provide for those things. But most of the people didn't didn't have uh, uh, didn't have running water until it got in the in the later years. Yeah. Uh, particularly after the war, it really took off. The Second yeah. World War, it really took off, and uh, and uh, things changed. Then I always remember the thrashing, thrashing days when in the, the machine would come. The Bill Simner's machine would come into the neighborhood, and my neighbor across the road would always ask me to help him, uh, help him thrash. And uh, the big lunches, the big dinners, and the big suppers after, oh, and oh, they'd always man. bring out a few bottles of beer during the day to yeah. help things along a little bit. And yeah. Yeah. Then I got a little older, and my uncle asked me to to help him. Well, that was more fun because the cousins and us were all together, and yeah. we we had a good time at yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those were those were good times. And then, of course, what they'd like to do is uh, get the young fellows to carry bags. Yeah. Remember? That? Yeah. 
<laughs> they'd have wheat that's heavy, you know. Oh. <laughs> and so they'd, these big guys would take and throw a bag of wheat up and you'd land it on your shoulder. <laughs> oh, Sink right to the ground. You ended up the day you was about four inches shorter than you were <laughs> when you started the day. I was yeah. lucky. I was too, too small then. Too yeah, young you were then. too small. But boy, they just liked that. They said, oh, we'll oh, yeah. show this young smart aleck. Yeah, and get them on the bags. Yeah. Carrying remember, bags. We used to go all around the neighborhood. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and uh, used to work. I remember getting 45 cents an hour. You bet. That, you know, and and uh, then you get the meals besides. Yeah. And you always depend on the good meals. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. You get Every, good. At least you knew where the good meals were. Yeah, you knew where. You know, after a couple yeah. of years at it, you found out where the good meals were. Each farm wife tried to outdo the one Do before. The next yeah. one, I think. <laughs> yeah. Boy, but all the good the, homemade bread and yeah, stuff yeah, that we had. Yeah, oh, and, man. Yeah. Yeah, and then the women would get together, and then they'd work together. And, yeah, but the wise neighbors, you, yeah. you you got to know who your neighbors were. You, you, always, you knew yeah. their ups and downs. And they knew, uh, you know, what was going on in the neighborhood, and and you knew everybody. But now you don't know anybody. It seems like I don't know if that's my fault or what. But I mean, people move in and out, and well, so what? You know, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter too much. No, one. In difficult times, like when a barn burnt or something like that, yeah. the whole neighborhood would get together yeah. and help build that barn back yeah. up and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Or if there was sickness in the family, they would they would come and either plant the crops or harvest the crops for yeah. the guy yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. That yeah. that made a better neighborhood, also. Yeah, yeah. so we're working more, together. We're more yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Did. yeah, I remember. Uh, one time, the family living across the road from us, they, they had a lot of kids. And it was during the, it must have been about in 36 or something like that, uh, they didn't have a telephone. And this one little girl, her name was Rosemary, she came down with uh, scarlet fever. And uh, I remember the father coming over, knocking on our door to get the telephone, and doctor would doctor came out. Well, in a few days, Rosemary, was dead. She didn't last long. Hmm. But it, it wasn't unusual, you know, for family members to die back then. I yeah. Mean, you take the, the young the, ones especially. The young ones yeah. especially. Yep. If you got to be, if you got to be sixty, the chances were pretty good you'd make it to seventy. But there were so many uh, kids that died at birth or within a, a few years they get yeah. measles or whooping cough or some disease like that. And polio was a big thing. Oh, God, my yeah. mother would worry so about kids getting kids polio. Getting polio. Because there's no no defense against it, you know. Yeah. Now we don't even think about polio anymore. Mm -hmm. But that was that was pretty serious stuff. Well, they, they called the fair off one year because of the a polio That's epidemic. Right. They did. Yep, I remember that. Yep. You know, going back to school, you know, Charlie, i got to tell a story that you're involved in. <laughs> I know what he's coming with. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's the last day of school. And I couldn't go to school that day because I had to stay home and spray the orchard because my dad was working in the shipyard and we had some cherries. And, uh, you know, I was a whole in fourth grade, in, in, in eighth grade. You're about 14, so. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I had to stay home and spray the cherries, so I didn't go to school. Well, about 10 o'clock, Three guys, three guys, my classmates come, come walking down the road, you know, and they stopped in. And I thought, well, you know, what's going on? Oh, nothing, you know, we're just, just thought we'd leave for a while. <laughs> and it wasn't long. You remember C.P. Haberman? Yes. He drove in. He walked in the house. He didn't knock or anything. He said, you so and so, you so and so, you so and so, yeah. Come yeah, with me. yeah. Well, you better come with me. Well, what's the matter? Well, it seems as though somebody brought a stick of dynamite to school. <laughs> 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 and, and they 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 they, uh, they had this woods out in the back, you know. And so they lit the stick of dynamite, and everybody run the other way, except here comes little Charlie Jarman running down the path. <laughs> you're lucky you're here, boy. Cause that you remember that? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> that must have been quite a shock, huh? Well, I, I had my hand on the door when it went off. Oh, you you got past yeah. you got past it. 
We but used anyway. to play out, uh, out in the woods until, you know, no, until the bell well, rang or whatever and like called us in. And it was, it was a <coughs> big thing to go playing out in the woods and yeah. tag and stuff like that. Sure. There were kids running around all out on yeah. picnic day. They thought they'd send her off with a blast. Blast, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they would be in prison. This now oh, they, well, I guess so. Happened. Wait, it was funny, but anyway, yeah, well, yeah. Know, good yeah. old times. And I remember Paler's next door down here, Eddie's yeah. folks, when old, uh, oh, what's Eddie's dad's name? Freddie. Fred. We used, I remember yet, I knew better, and they told me, but I still, you had to do things yourself to learn. I went, and if anybody ever stuck their tongue, and put it on in the winter time when it was real cold, and put it on the pump handle where we used to pump water. Look out! Your tongue was your. You'd pull it back quick, and all the skin on your tongue would rip off. Because <laughs> you'd stick right to the pump handle. <laughs> and there's no kid in our day that didn't try it at least once, but only once you try it. That was part of the growing up process. Part of the growing up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But to talk about hospitals, you know, it was years ago, you know, when when you have a family of four or five kids, and all of a sudden you see in the paper all the kids, all the kids were in the hospital. All they all were in had their tonsils out all at the same oh. time, or had your adenoids out. Yep, tonsils the whole family would go. All the kids would <laughs> yep. go. You just had to get your tonsils out. That was you know? automatic. Yeah, and your adenoids. I don't know if they still yeah. have kids that have adenoids or not. I don't know if they grow them yet or not. I don't know. <laughs> But I remember old uh, uh, old Doc, uh, oh, from Sturgeon Bay. The German guy? Yeah, you guys. Mulhauser. Mulhauser. Yeah. My wife never wanted to go there because she couldn't understand them. Uh -huh. She had a hard time understanding if we take the kids there. Yeah. So I don't know, I guess we had to take them someplace else. But that, he took my tonsils and adenoids out, and my sisters too. And he, the big building in town, Right on the corner, but stop and go right there. That yeah, was, that was Leesham Hospital. Leesham Hospital, and that's where he went. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh boy, I never, I can think of that yet, that ether mask going over your face. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he, was, he was the only doctor that would examine you that I knew while smoking a cigarette. Yep. He I always remember smoked that. cigarettes. And, and he could talk, and that cigarette Hang ash. Down. Yeah, that cigarette ash Follow. would just hang on that cigarette, you yep. know. And he, he was a German. He came right from yeah, Germany. Yeah, I know. He, he came from Germany. Germany. And he could talk, and he could look at you, and he'd, he'd, he'd say, well, how, how are you? Well, he said, uh, I think you're pretty good shape. Your eyes certainly look good. <laughs> <laughs> he could tell by looking in your eyes whether or not you you had anything or not. But uh, he was an interesting guy, and, and um, he was right on the corner where that, um, right across from the post office, and his, his office was in there. Yeah. 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 Delivered the kids. My youngest daughter, she was in the hospital and everything was a hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> hospital yeah. doctor and the whole thing. Well, you know we're all farmers, and uh, farmers are—they've uh, had ups and downs, and our 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 cropping systems have changed and so on. But uh, I remember when uh, you know we used to have—we always, plant, always planted corn, had oats. And hay usually, and uh, corn was uh, there was kind of a different way we planted corn years ago than we plant it today. You remember Charlie we used to plant it thirty six inch rows and and yeah. plants were long ways apart and yeah. Well, and then sometimes they would check row it so when the corn uh -huh. come up, it looked like it was a checkerboard. Uh, effect in the cornfield because they felt that the corn plant couldn't be squeezed that much. No. They had to have a lot of sunshine and air and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Today we go, that we were probably planting about 12,000 uh, seeds to an acre. Today we're planting 30. 30,000 seeds. Yeah. yeah, or better. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the corn business has changed from just corn, mainly corn silage to into cobs, went through the corn pickers and stuff like that, that yeah. took the husks off, put the cobs in the granary to combines that, and grain dryers that uh, 
we don't monkey with that anymore. It's easier to handle and it lends itself to mechanical harvest, mechanical harvesting and mechanical handling better. Yeah. Yeah. And the yield, of course, are more than doubled. Yeah, more than doubled. Yep. We, the advent of, of, we used to grow our own seed corn, but now, now they, uh, when everybody is using hybrid seed that you yeah. buy new seed every year. And yeah. it's um, scientifically developed to the point that you can only use certain weed sprays on it to kill the weeds and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. And in the last few years, we've seen a resurgence of, of wheat in, in the area. Uh, the market has become a little better. Many years ago, in the 1830s to 1860s, they, they planted a lot of wheat, but they felt that it took too much out of the soil, and, and the, the, the yields declined that much that they didn't feel it was uh, worthwhile. Okay. And, uh, of course, all the stone pick and everything else was done by hand then, and you had to get every little marble stone because it might go in the uh, thrashing machine. And yeah, yeah. the guy that <laughs> had the thrasher would, would raise heck with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, we used to have that, uh, that open pollinated corn. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you get one hot day in July and it tossed out, that would be the end of it. It didn't, couldn't stand the, the drought at all. But yeah, the, the, the corn is different, uh, totally different uh, uh, the way we raise it. And the reason that, another reason that they had these crossroads, these cross check, check roads, was you would cultivate it both ways. Well, well sure, yeah. You know, you have a way that you For could wheat get control. all the weeds, you know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and, and uh, the animal, the whole animal thing has changed, you know, where we had, everybody had a, a herd of cows and maybe their neighbor had a bull and that every once in a while you see the farmer going down the road with this bull on the end of a rope, yeah. <laughs> going to the neighbors, yeah. take care of the cows. And But uh, <clears throat> it seems that uh, uh, when artificial insemination uh, came along, that, that changed the whole dairy industry, didn't it? Oh yeah, it was equivalent to, to uh, hybrid corn. Yeah. As far as production and everything else, it improved so much in a short time. Yeah. It was equivalent to the hybrid corn that you just got more yield out of each cow. Yeah, yeah, more yield. And the uh, farm's got a few more cows. And then another big thing was when uh, a lake to lake uh, dairy came into the yeah. into the uh, neighborhood. Uh, that, that was a big blessing because what it did then, it, it gave the farmers another market for their milk. They could end up having uh, grade A milk, which brought a little premium where you had to have things fixed up a little better for it. But this was the first opportunity since almost the beginning of dairying here uh, that there's been an opportunity for farmers to get a little premium on their milk. Otherwise, we were always a little bit behind on, on, uh, on uh, uh, our price of our milk. You remember those old open uh, milk trucks they used to have? Oh, yeah. Art Weber used to have them. Art Weber used to oh, come by yeah. with the chain stakes and with the chains with around. With the chains around, keep the yeah. cans from falling milk off. Milk cans, and then they'd freeze in the winter. To, yeah. Uh, and get the sour in the summer. Sour in the summer. We'd <laughs> yeah. have to put them in a water tank and stir the milk until it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a good thing. That, that was uh, then, yeah. then, then all of a sudden somebody got the idea to have a milk cooler. Milk cooler, where you'd yeah. Have you milk, put the cans in this box, yeah. turn the water on, and that cold water would flow over the flow cans. Over. You know. And that was all right when you had six or eight cans of milk, but when they got more production, that wouldn't, didn't work out so good. My but, original yeah. experience with dairying was that uh, we used to deliver milk to houses downtown. Yeah, you did. In court, court or pint bottles, whatever mm -hmm. it was, and uh, we had a separator that you separate the cream out and would sell it that way, and uh, that meant every every morning and every night when you got done milking, you still had to fill the bottles. Yeah. We had a fill, bottle filler and everything, but somebody had to go around and put each one of those little paper caps on. Oh, that was yeah. usually my job. <laughs> <laughs> and then go go out at four, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and, and deliver it downtown to the homes that had, that had ordered it. And also to some of the little stores, there was a lot of little stores around town. Yeah. 
that that we delivered to and, and things like that. But it, it was an early experience in, in modern daring or whatever you want yeah. to call it. Yeah. Did you have uh, did you have to pasteurize milk that time? No, we quit when they did, when they they passed the state law that you had to pasteurize. Yeah. It was all raw milk. Yeah. And uh, but we quit when they had to pasteurize because they, for our operation was not. Yeah. Financially feasible to to go and uh, yeah. buy the the equipment. You had all Guernseys then too, didn't you? Yeah, it was a, it yeah. was a golden Guernsey milk. Yeah, yeah. Rolling yeah, Hill I Dairy. <laughs> yeah, I remember. You used to bottle milk, and and Fred Ashes used to bottle yeah. milk, bottle milk, and Roy Marshall now yeah. in Sturgeon yeah. Bay, and did Fails did Fails uh, I have don't a milk think so. I don't think they did. Bottler. They may have sold the flex, so. Oh, I think, yeah, I think they, they could did. Have. Yeah. Yeah, and then after the milk trucks, uh, they got modern, they put a little co a little cab over them. Yeah. So you could uh, uh, keep the milk out of the sun. I think they were having some quality problems. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> with some of that milk. Yeah. It would sit there a while, and it, uh, I'm sure that so every once in a while there would be a can that had can some that sour milk in it. I'm sure of that. And flies and everything else. I'm surprised yeah, a few you flies to slip through there. <laughs> Every, when you take the strainer, remember you guys take the old strainer, and set it on the can in the in the barn behind the cows, and then you pour well. your milk in a pail, and then you get, dump it in the strainer, <laughs> and you had the strainer pad in there that that would take the dirt out. Well, it took an, it didn't. I don't know. There was not, usually sometimes an awful lot of dirt in there. And and the cats always like to eat those strainer pads. Yeah, <laughs> that wouldn't do them any good. <laughs> Pretty sure the cats yeah. died from died. constipation. I don't know. Yeah, why. I think so. They, they were, that was a great thing. Yeah. But yeah. then if the milk wouldn't run and the strainer just right, just slam her down on the yeah, She'd go through that. <laughs> you had to get it through. Bang. Then you'd pour too much in, it would run over once oh. in a while. The can, you yeah, couldn't let them watch the it. There were a lot the of flies. The can would run over. Oh, why? Yeah, but that was... That was uh, Pretty primitive, but you know there was how many cheese factories do you think there were in Sevastopol at one time? One up here. Yeah, this used to be at one time a cheese factory. Yeah, this was. Yep. Yeah, at one time this was a cheese factory. Is that right? I didn't know yep. that. Yeah, on the corner here, they had the well there. That supplied the cheese factory. I know the folks told, told me that there was a cheese factory mm -hmm. here, but there's a cheese factory down on the corner. Yeah. Uh, by the town line road. Golden and, Glow, that was. Yeah, yeah. Was and there road. was one over by uh, Tony Haynes. Tony Haynes, yep. And, uh, there was one in the Institute. Yeah. On the end of that mm -hmm. row of uh, houses, that old stone house. That, that was a. But that that was a big thing, you know. Oh, you bet. You'd have, then you'd milk and you'd just put the stuff on the buggy or whatever and you'd just haul it over to the over cheese, to the factory, cheese factory. factory. That was part of it. Was it? You didn't want to haul it too far. Or yeah. You, it, they were close enough that you could haul, haul one way or the other with yeah. the horse, horse and yeah. buggy or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Wouldn't freeze. And, uh, and it would have time, time not to spoil. Yeah, yeah. It it was a, it, it was a, a, a challenge to keep that you milk bet. fresh and yeah. and and uh, uh, that people could use it. Of course, that's why cheese factories are so nice because you could make it into cheese and. And uh, you could you could store it right. easily then. Of course, that 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 that, uh, that uh, uh, dairy business that kind of started up uh, after the wheat business. Yeah. You know there was a transition mm -hmm. in there where, like you say, the wheat it wouldn't grow anymore. Yeah. They they oh, they clear the fields and they plant wheat, no fertilizer or anything. But then if you get cows, well then you've got the cow manure, oh, you've got the, the fertility, and you've yeah. got the, uh, the the pastures and this sort of thing. And it fit in pretty good, but uh, I don't know. A number of cows that are left in Door County right now. I I, I don't think it would it would um, be anywhere near the total number that were here. Well, I know that. Here. All you gotta do is go down the mile length of the road, and there is no cows at all. No, there's no cows at all, and the barns are all falling apart. Yeah, you know, you not buy them up. You know, that's one thing I always kick the kick out of these artists. They see these, paint these pictures of these yeah. old barns. Oh, isn't that... Older the better. Isn't that nice? And look at this lovely old barn. When I look at an old barn like that, all I think is hard work, no money, poverty. Uh -huh. Poverty. <laughs> kids, yeah. uh, a bunch of kids and, and uh, tough going. I mean, there's That's nothing right. romantic to me no. about old barn. I see a failure barn. of the system. 
It's a yeah. It's a monument. It's a monument to some bad, bad, bad times. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, you know, and you know, I I think you know we never talk a lot about it, but I I think there was a lot of alcoholism back then in those days. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, because it wasn't in our family, your family, so much, but but I remember if you want to go and find a farmer, uh, you, you, there's two places you could go. You could either go to his house. Chances are he wouldn't be there, but he'd be down to the Institute the Country Institute. Tavern. <laughs> you know, Institute. Sometime during the day, you'd find yeah. him down there. But then, when you guys had the National Inn, National Hotel, that was a kind of a uh, sure. interesting hangout too, wasn't it? But I remember, oh yeah, it was. All the farmers would come down when they get their feed ground and that. They'd always come over there. Yeah, yeah, it was get quite the a milk thing at cast. that time. Yeah, get the milk <laughs> chat and they go to the tavern. But I know up here at Institute, the neighbor right down here. Keen, Herman, and and uh, Lenny, the far farmer right in the hollow next to us here, they'd go every morning at 9 o'clock, they'd go to the tavern up at Institute and have a couple beers and come back. And every noon, they'd go up to the tavern <laughs> and have a couple beers. You could set your watch by it. Them guys, and everybody else was busy. We never could figure out how they could do that, but they did. They, they got by. They yeah. got by. Yeah. They made a living. Yeah. Yeah. Was that Buck? Yeah. Was that Buck? Here? Carlton. Buck Carlton. Yeah. But yeah. then there was Leonard. He was the older one. Oh there was yeah. Two boys. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. their girl. There was a girl too, I guess. Yeah. Well, somewhere it's in between the wheat and the dairy business, there, there was a while where they, they raised uh, peas for. Yeah. Dry that was peas the other thing. for for like pea soup and stuff like that. Yeah. That's where Reynolds. Hard peas. Reynolds uh, brothers got That's their true. start. That's right. They yeah. did. And. Uh, that got like went just like the wheat. They had they had a the continuous crop for a little while, and all of a sudden they couldn't grow. It didn't grow, and yeah, and they yeah. were run they were running out of fertilizer the fertilizer that they needed. Yeah, uh, with a continuous crop, and yeah. and uh, so yeah. it went to something else. Yeah, know? that was something about you know they, they, there was no such thing as fertilizer back in them. No, who ever heard of fertilizer? You know, no. you just. The ground was, this ground was kind of poor to begin with yeah. and shallow, and so it was just kind of, it was it was a struggle in Door County. People, like you yeah. say, your grandpa left up in northern Door County, and that's right, I mean, there, 50% of the, of the, of the ground stone. Was, was stone. Yep. Around here it was probably only 10%. Yep. But, <laughs> well, my grandmother used to say you could park a wagon in the middle of the field fill and up. fill the wagon without ever moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's some reason why all those stone fences are still yeah. around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a lot of them. You go up north, and oh yeah, and there's a lot well, there's of them. There's a lot of them around fences. here too. Yeah, and you know that every one of those things had to be picked off the field and moved and thrown in a pile. In pile. In many of cases, it's piled. Yeah, because yeah. you stack. But you had to make a wall outside it so yeah. that you could throw the rest throw in the middle. Side. And you couldn't throw them out on your neighbor's side because he no, didn't, he like, didn't like, that. like heck. <laughs> <laughs> he was right there. He was right there. To, and I remember every Saturday that was stone picking day because yep. we were home from school. And Pa, he'd always pick stones on Saturday. Hmm. That was the main thing. He had thing. the kids there to pick stones. Yeah. Well, and then one of the women would drive, my Ma would drive the Tracked her real slow and we'd pick stones. Walk along and pick stones. Walk along yeah, and pick stones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a, that was a, that was that was about that time we were deciding started. whether he wanted to farm or not. Yeah. <laughs> then I remember when Pa had to farm. All of a sudden, he decided he bought a boat, and he. I remember the first time that was quite a few years ago. He said, "From now on, we're never going to work on Saturday afternoon. We're going to take Saturday afternoon off." Good. And by God, we did. Good when Saturday you. afternoon came, that was it. He'd bring the boat out, we'd wash it, or we'd go fish.